In 1954, researchers at the Weizmann Institute of Science built the first electronic computer in Israel and one of the first computers worldwide, which they fondly named Witech. Thirty years later, silicon chip computers routinely functioned at a rate that was thousands and millions of times faster than Witech. Today, research at the Institute targets the development of ever faster, more compact chips designed according to the emerging principles of quantum electronics. These will inevitably leave silicon chips in the dust, much as silicon chips once turned Witech into a museum exhibit. Surprising as it may sound, however, even before quantum electronic chips have become a reality, they already have a potential successor. Professor Ehud Shapiro from the Computer Science and Applied Mathematics Department, where WITAC was conceived, has crossed the lawn to the Institute's Life Sciences Building, where he established a multidisciplinary research team that set about designing a tiny biological computer. The group has now succeeded in building a tiny computing machine using DNA molecules and two enzymes that edit DNA. One drop of a watery solution in this new laboratory can hold roughly one trillion of these nanocomputers all coexisting and operating in parallel. How does this biological nanocomputer work? An ordinary computer has input, output, software and hardware. Our biomolecular computer uh, also has these components, but they are all uh, biological molecules. So here we have test tubes with the uh, solutions containing uh, these biological molecules. Uh, in this test tube we have uh, the input molecules, which are uh, DNA molecules, and actually we have a trillion copies of uh, the same uh, molecule in each of these uh, test tubes. Uh, the software for the computer also consists of DNA molecules, and we, here we have the eight software molecules with which uh, we program our computer. Again, in each uh, test tube, we have a solution with DNA molecules, uh, about a trillion copies of each. And uh, when programming the computer, we choose uh, different software molecules uh, to construct the program. Our computer also has hardware, and the hardware are uh, biological uh, enzymes that manipulate DNA. We have an enzyme called uh, FOC1 here in this test tube, which cuts DNA, and another enzyme uh, called ligase, uh, which uh, seals DNA molecules uh, together. And with these components, uh, we're going to construct uh, our computer and actually uh, perform a computation. Actually, the, uh, in the computation, we'll show there are actually 12 components, and Kobe is going to mix them together to uh, create a computation. So actually, what uh, will happen is that uh, uh, Kobe will uh, create the software program by mixing together software molecules, uh, and then mix this together with the input and the hardware molecules and some auxiliary molecules. Uh, uh, for example, the ATP molecule, which is used uh, for energy, and then affect the computation. This is the last component uh, to be mixed. It's the enzyme FOC1, which cuts DNA. And as soon as uh, Kobe puts it in the test tube, the computation uh, commences. Here we will see how the computation actually occurs in the test tube. The input of the computation is a DNA molecule, which encodes the symbols 1, 0, and 1. The computation will detect whether this list of symbols has an even number of ones. The exposed strand of the DNA molecule encodes the state as zero and the symbol as one. Here comes a software molecule which tries to match the first state and symbol and it fails. Another software molecule which does match the initial state as zero and the first symbol as one comes and matches. And once they match, an enzyme called ligase can come and seal them together into one molecule. The software molecule contains a special site marked in red, which can be recognized by an enzyme called FOC1, which also attaches to DNA. It scans it until it recognizes this red site. Once it finds it, it cuts DNA at a special location which actually exposes the next state and symbol, S1 and 0, and the computation is ready for the next cycle. Here comes a software molecule that detects this state and symbol, and ligase seals it to the remaining input molecule. The incoming software molecule also includes a recognition site for FOC1, which comes detects it, and cuts inside the next input symbol, exposing the next state, which is S1. 
A software molecule comes and detects S1 and 1. Is ligated to the remaining input symbol. And we're almost ready to complete the computation. FOC1 comes and cuts into the terminator symbol of the computation, exposing an overhang which indicates the final result of the computation. Two molecules try to detect that result, one with the red attachment and the other with the green attachment that actually makes contact and detects that the input molecule had an even number of ones. What mathematical problems can this computer solve today? Our molecular computer realizes a mathematical computing machine known as finite automaton. Actually, we realized almost the simplest possible such uh, automaton that has only two states and eight possible uh, rules of operation. And out of these rules of operation, we can construct programs that drive this automaton to compute different things. For example, uh, it can check whether a list of zeros and ones has an even number of ones. Also, with a different software program, it can check whether a list of zeros and ones has at most two ones. And other simple uh, computations uh, like that, a total of 735 software programs can be constructed for this automaton, all uh, checking uh, properties of lists and zeros and ones uh, of the type that I've explained. How is this computer different from other biological computers that we've heard about? Uh, previous work on biological computers uh, used the entire laboratory, including the equipment and the people in it, uh, to solve large computational problems. Our work, on the other hand, uh, is about creating tiny nanoscale computers uh, that solve simple uh, computational problems. What are the long-term goals of this research? What we've created is a very simple computer that can solve only toy problems. Uh, our long-term goal, which may take uh, several decades to realize, uh, is to create uh, such tiny computers ca that can operate inside the human body and sense the uh, biochemical environment any problems it may have and as in response using their software and uh, rules uh, that are programmed in them might uh, create drugs that can correct the problem.